Hello, Wisecrack Nation, YouTube community, and aliens from across the stars. It's your boy Navi here, coming back to you with a review and a recap of the Orville. So far, we're on season two, episode number nine, titled Identity Part Two. We're picking up where we left off of Identity Part One and seeing how the Kalons have abducted the crew of the Orville and heading towards Earth to take control and implement their will. We have to wonder and see who will survive and if they can get the Orville back on track and in union hands. But for right now, let's get into the action and get this episode started. Well, we start off this episode by seeing the crew is still hostage. And by the looks of it, nothing will change until you factor in Ty Finn wanting to see Isaac. At which when he tries to escape and Lieutenant Kiara gets blasted by Kalon for her troubles. Fortunately, Captain Mercer shows his leadership skills and has... Tala taken to the doctor's office with Dr. Finn in tow. It seems even though after regaining consciousness, Lieutenant Kiali is still in pain. But the worst is yet to come as Isaac is sent to gather the captain, the doctor, and the lieutenant in the meeting room and be briefed on what they're supposed to do by Kaline Primary. At which point they're told if they don't comply, the entire crew of the Orville will be killed. And in an unfortunate event, once gaining back to the bridge, Captain Mercer and his crew are met by another Union ship, Captain by Marcos. At which point they try to deliver a coded message for Marcos to signal the Union that they've been captured and taken hostage, at which case, Kaelin Primary shows his seriousness and destroys the other Union ship. It seems that with the destruction of the other Union ship, Captain Mercer is taken to another part of the Orville in order to be disciplined, at which point he sees one of his crew members surrounded by a bunch of Kalon sentries. Unfortunately for the crew member, because of the actions of Captain Mercer, the crew member is placed inside an air lock and jettisoned in the space because of Captain Mercer's insubordinates. Problems were following the orders of Kalon Prime. Because Isaac was manufactured after the enslavement of the Kalons previous years ago, he's coming to know sympathy for almost each and every crew member, even though he refuses to admit it. So Kalon Primary has given him a directive to choose a new name and get a reprogramming so he can function as a regular Kalon. It seems that in the Kalon race, they share more in common with the Germans and Adolf Hitler or any dictatorship trying to take advantage of another race. Well, it seems that with everything happening, the crew of the Orville is desperately trying to come up with a plan, at which point Lieutenant Commander Grayson has come up with the idea to sneak away in a shuttle with Gordon in order to meet up with the Krill and convince them to help stop the Kalon. The only downside is if this plan doesn't work, not only do the, the hostages of the Orville get killed, but Commander Grayson and Gordon would wind up dead from the Krill as well. Well, it seems that the plan is in action in order to get a shuttle out of the Orville and into Krill Space to get help as Jafet goes and retrieves a weapon from the 
weapons room and bring it back to the others in order for Bordas to use to destroy the Kalon sentries. After Commander Grayson and Bordas have escaped in the shuttle, it is up to Yafit once again to get a message off. Unfortunately, he can't do it alone without being discovered. So, for his sake, Marcus, Dr. Finn's youngest son, goes with him in order to help him because he's the only one who can fit into the spaces that lead into the message center. I really have to wonder if sending a kid to do an adult's job is worth the risk. It's not like he's a Power Ranger, you know? I mean, he's just one little kid. Name one little kid as a Power Ranger that you can think of that has ever done any good. No, no, he doesn't count. That was in the 90s. This is now. This is the new millennium. It seems that everything is still going according to plan as Jaffa and Ty send out a message to Union and scrambling the signal at the same time. But unfortunately, Kalon sentries have located them. Even though Yafit is able to stop one in his tracks, the other is able to capture Ty and take him off. Meanwhile, in another region of space, Lieutenant Malloy and Commander Kelly have met up with the Quill and informed them of the Kalon's plan. Unfortunately, the Kalon, being the people that they are, didn't believe them until a Kalon ship hyperspaced out of nowhere and tried to destroy the Krill battleships. It seems that Isaac's resolve is tested once again as Kalon primary sent for him to be retrieved from the bridge and told that he must execute Ty for trying to send a message. At which point, Isaac finally makes his own decision and not only rips off the head of Primary, but executes and takes out all the other sentries in the room while rescuing Ty. And after doing so, he returns to the bridge to take out all other sentries and orders his prodigal son to go down to the shuttle bay and release the rest of the crew because he will be sending an EMP blast throughout the ship killing all of the Kalon including himself but before doing so Ty gives him a strong statement of human emotion telling him that he loves him after activating the EMP that goes throughout the ship all Kalon is shut down at which case Ty returns to the shuttle bay and releases all members of the Orville. At which point everyone returns to their station and gets ready for the events that lie ahead. In one of the most difficult and overwhelming battles, the Union hold their own against the Kalon, but only for a short limited amount of time until the Krill show up and provide the backup thanks to the plan made by Commander Kelly. Luckily, after everything was said and done, it seems that the Union and the Krill were able to accomplish their goal and destroy the Kalon fleet targeting Earth. Now the question comes to stand, what's going to happen from then on? After the battle is said and done, the crew of the Orville decide on whether to keep Isaac deactivated or reactivate him. Fortunately for them, Yafet has been inside of the Kalon Sentry and knows how to reactivate him more than likely, at which point they grant him access to do so. At which point Union Central decides on whether what to do with Isaac due to the fact that the Kalon have tried to commit genocide on Earth and throughout the galaxy. Captain Mercer claims that if left upon the Orville, Isaac will be very helpful in the future to stop Kalon attacks because he no longer has a home. 
and after putting himself on the line for Isaac, Union Central okays it and allows him to stay upon the Orville. And after all is said and done, Dr. Finn has a few moments along with Isaac and tells him that home is where you make it. And more than anything, he'll have to be willing to go through a human process called earning forgiveness. All in all, this episode of the Orville was what you call one of the best. It seems like it came straight out of a movie, but it was worth the wait to watch. They took this episode and made it seem like the movie Star Wars took place in just one hour. While keeping the elements of sci-fi, it seems like they gave us a little bit of Star Trek, Star Wars, and a little bit of Doctor Who. But the evolution of Isaac and the human emotion of the young Ty and his love for Isaac as well really brought this episode and made it stand out among the rest so far. Seems that this, even though this show is about all members of the Orville, it seems that Isaac is the most central character of the bunch. I wonder if it were you, would you forgive Isaac so easily? Wise Crack Nation, as for right now, it's time for your boy to get out of here. I feel that it's time for me to head back into the Orville and go along with them and see where they land next. Hopefully everything with Isaac works out in the end, but because we know how some people react and how they're going to get in their feelings. But I'll see you around for next episode. Do me a favor, please. Drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share for more. And please, if you can, go ahead and check out my friends at the 450 Legion Gaming Channel. They're always there for you guys if you need to contact them. If you want to see some of more of their gaming content, just let them know. But for right now, I want you people to stay wise, crack hard, and I'll see you next time around. Peace.